For the multiplayer features of my game, I experimented with a lot of different ways to connect players together. And all I knew from the start is that I want to use the Steamworks multiplayer API. But since Steamworks is written in C++, uh, I needed to find a wrapper for the API so that I could use it in Unity. After trying out a couple of them, I finally decided to use facepunch.steamworks. Since I found it was uh, the most straightforward and also easy to implement without too much trouble. Facepunch has a decent documentation, although I found that Steamworks in general doesn't uh, have too many instructions and tutorials online, so I had to do a lot of experimenting by myself. In a nutshell, Steamworks achieves multiplayer in a similar fashion to other multiplayer APIs, at least to my knowledge. The players are basically put together inside a lobby, from where they're further put uh, into the game based on settings which you can set in the lobby, for example the server size, the map, uh, minimum, maximum players, uh, and stuff like that. The first thing I did after importing Steamworks and Facepunch into my project is I tried to see if it even connects to Steam correctly. So I added this little text here to welcome the player into the game and it, uh, it should uh, get the player name from the Steam server. The next step was to create a lobby, and since this was my first time making a multiplayer game, this step was probably the hardest. Thankfully, this part of the API is well covered throughout the internet, so I was able to find some code online which helped me understand the way this stuff works. The way the lobby works is you just create some functions which you need to subscribe to Steamworks events, and everything else uh, is handled under the hood. Finally, after a lot of trial and error, I was able to connect my two PCs together inside a lobby. I then created some buttons here with typical lobby functionalities like uh, the button to tell the server that you're ready, a button to start the game, and a button to leave, and of course a button to invite a friend into the lobby. The buttons for starting the game and inviting people are only visible to the host of the lobby and I made it so that if the host leaves the lobby instead of automatically disconnecting if there's another player connected he's going to receive the host privileges and will be able to invite other people. After there are two players in the lobby and they are both ready the host will be able to press the start button and the players will be moved over into the game scene. The lobby logic was now done, but the other player was still not connected to the actual game and the other player was not moving on my screen. This is because I now needed to communicate the player input across the server so that I know what the other player was doing. There weren't many tutorials on this topic that I could find so I had to really dig through the internet to put together something that worked. Uh, what I was able to find was that I needed to create a server object and send my information to that object where it will be further distributed to other players. What was kind of tricky though was that I couldn't simply send information as a bunch of vectors and numbers. In order to send and receive data through the server, uh, it needed to be sent as an int ptr, which was a data structure I had never heard of before and I found it very complicated to convert my player data into this structure. The only way I could make it happen, and I'm sure this is not the most efficient way, was to convert my data into a string, then convert the string into a byte array, and finally convert the byte array into int ptr, which I could then send to the server. And after a lot of errors and bug fixing, I was finally starting to have something which resembled a multiplayer game. The way I set it up is I'm sending position and rotation information about any movable object in the scene between the players, while stuff like score and game timer are kept on the host computer uh, and then sent to the guest. The next thing I plan on doing is expanding the functionality so that the game can be played in teams and also adding a matchmaking option to find a random player to play against. <laughs> 